Hello and welcome back to another Geo Explaining video. Today I will talk about paragraph 3.4 of Buitenland for the Twee Fabio classes. This will be about the water shortage. So if you're in my class or you're doing Twee Fabio, Twee Talig Onderwijs on Buitenland, this is just for you. And otherwise, of course, this is also just for you because it will still be very interesting and you'll learn something new. So last time we looked at places that had a high risk of flooding. But today we will look at places that actually have a shortage of water. So instead of too much, there's too little. Now I already wrote some things down this time. So when we look at places that don't have, to have enough water, we talk about places with water stress. Basically a shortage of water or there is not enough water. But you can divide this into two sections. First, there is the physical water shortage. This just means that there is actually no water in this area. So when we look at this desert over here, well, there's actually just no water here. So there is a physical water shortage. On the other hand, there is an economic water shortage. This means that due to Frans, <laughs> you're right in my face. Come, come over here. So with an economic water shortage, there hasn't been enough investment in getting water. So due to a lack of money or not enough investment in some places, you cannot find enough water. So for example, you have this area and there's actually some water in the ground. And when you would pump it up, you can actually provide the people with water, but they did not invest in a pump. So let's say I, there's only half a pump or there is just not enough money for the whole pump. So there is an economic water shortage. Because of all this water stress and this water shortage, there's actually some tensions rising between countries. And maybe in the future, there will be even conflicts about water, a water war. But why is water so important? Well, first of all, we drink it from the cup or from a bucket or from the tap, but we need water to survive. But on the other hand, we also need water to grow our crops. In other words, irrigation. Approximately 70% of the water that we have, the fresh water, is used for irrigation. So, therefore, water is very, very important. Isn't that right, Franz? All right, you just walk away. Now, in places where there is a water shortage, you have to come up with different ways to save water and use it on moments where it's actually really dry. A good way to do this is by building a dam. For example, you have a river flowing, but by building a dam around it, you save water and in times of need, when it's really dry, you can open the dam and you can drown your dog, but you can open the dam and it will provide the area with water. And as soon as it's okay, you can close the dam again and the area will have enough water for a certain amount of time. Now, of course, dams aren't always the best idea though. First of all, this is a tiny dam, but in other cases, in real life, dams can be huge and take up a lot of space. This space was used by farmers or other people before. So all these people that lived in this area before have to move out. Of course, also due to its sedimentation, the reservoir behind the dam might silt up and slowly become less efficient. And last but not least, due to natural disasters, a dam might break. Imagine an earthquake and the dam breaks. All the land surrounding the dam gets flooded and all the doggos, including Franz, might get drowned and get lost in the ocean. Oh, Franz, okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I won't hurt you again. Oh, well, dogs can teleport, who knew? So dams are a great solution, but they aren't always the safest solution. So what else can we do to save water or use our water in a more sustainable way? Well, Franz, you lead me right to the next topic. Of course, with the irrigation, you need water. This water is sometimes laid out like this on the surface, so the plants can soak it right up. But when it's on the surface, due to its evaporation, the water will disappear into the sky and that's kind of a waste of water. So a better way to irrigate your plants and your land and your crops is to build tiny tubes and out of these tubes little bits of water are given to the plants. So the water cannot evaporate and the plant still gets its water. 
But not only in irrigation can you save water, also in your own house, even you and me. For example, you can pee in the shower. Of course, this is not the most hygienic way of saving water, but every time you flush the toilet, you waste a little bit of water. But you can also think of things such as taking shorter showers and showering less, or not running the tap while you're brushing your teeth, or using more eco-friendly dishwashers that use less water, you name it, and with the right innovative minds, you can use less water. All right, thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Frans, for your attention. And I hope you learned something new. I hope you enjoyed it. Consider subscribing if you haven't. Leave a like and also comment down if you learned anything new, if you enjoyed it, stuff like that. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.